Oh, it's another day here at the Comeback Team Studios, and you're watching another episode of the Interesting Times Podcast right here on the Beck Lover Podcast, where I gather all the news, all the stories, all the gossip, everything you need to know about the interesting world that we live in. And my God, is it interesting indeed. Sometimes reality is truly stranger than fiction. This last week before the most important election in U.S. history, there's so much that's happened since the last episode, and I'm going to jump right into it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned right here. You can watch this show on YouTube, Spotify, Rumble, and you can listen to the audio version anywhere podcasts are received. Thank you for all the support. We've been going viral. I just finished the podcast uh, appearance. I don't even know if it's a podcast. His talk show, Mike Adams, you may have seen him many times co-hosting InfoWars. It was a very powerful session with Mike Adams, also at Power Ranger on X, formerly known as Twitter. We were discussing a lot about the world that we live in, geopolitics, and where to find the bridge between Christians and Muslims. And I think it was a very powerful episode, and I will be posting highlights and links to my appearance on Mike Adams' show. He definitely wants to bring me back and... It's just crazy how far this message and this work that I've been doing has gone. And it's all because of you. And I thank you all for being a part of my life, for helping me and following my work and sharing my message with the world. Make sure you check out all my links at becklover.com. Here we go. You know, I had a lot of time to think about, you know, the Trump rally at Madison Square Garden. And yes, I did respond to it that day. But now that I've had some time to kind of really review everything and think about it, I'm still sticking with my first assessment. Having this guy, Tony Hinchcliffe, on his rally at Madison Square Garden, one of the biggest gatherings that you know, former President Trump, maybe future President Trump, and I'll say maybe again, because this guy may have really costed him the Latino vote, okay? Because emotion overrides logic, I don't know what the hell Tony Hinchcliffe was thinking when he was making those jokes about Latinos. And I know people want to say, well, you know, he's just a comedian and, you know, free speech and we're having fun. But there's a time and a place for everything in life. There's a time and a place for everything. Sometimes we could say the same thing, right? But I say it at the wrong place in the wrong time and it can be catastrophic, we were not watching Tony Hinchcliffe in a dark, booze-filled environment, in a dark and raunchy, you know, comedy club where people go there for the shock and awe factor. No, we were in the world's arena. We were in Madison Square Garden, in front of the whole world, in front of all of America, where the stage was set to receive this presidential candidate in one of the most critical elections, the most divided country ever, you know, why would you even make a joke or a comment like that that could even be slightly used against Donald Trump if you were there to help him and not hurt him? And I'm really starting to question if he was really there as a fan or was he paid to sabotage the president? Who knows? I am all for free speech. Many of my friends are some of the biggest comedians in the world. I have people like Sam Tripoli who follow me on Instagram, who was literally on the Joe Rogan show one day before President Trump was on the Joe Rogan podcast. That has broken all records. I'm friends with people like Maz Draboni. Um, Leslie Jones, I've met her a few times. I can't really call her a friend, but she's cool. If I see her, she knows who I am, and we've hung out. But... As someone that is for free speech, and I have a very dark sense of humor, and I do like making jokes, and I don't mind being made fun of. I laugh at Muslim jokes when they make fun of us and call us, you know, all kinds of crazy names and, you know. But this guy's comments were catastrophic to the present. Now, do I think that this will impact the election? I think, in my heart of hearts, Trump is so ahead that... I don't think it would hurt as much, but I, I, at the same time, when you have all these massive Latino celebrities uniting against Trump now because of this idiot, 
I don't know. The Latino vote is a big vote. It's an important one. And I was offended for Puerto Ricans because there's just no reason to call it a big floating island of garbage, regardless of the fact that they have issues with sanitation and waste management. It was the delivery. It was no punchline. There was nothing to make it funny. It just sounded like an insult, really. And it was not the proper venue for this. It just really wasn't. And why would you risk, you know, and I blame the Trump organization for hiring a roast comedian. That's what he is. He's a roaster. They shock and all. They say the most vile stuff. What was the head of the Trump campaign even thinking about bringing him? And a lot of his roast, his comedy, is hilarious. In any event, let's recap a few of those comments. And let's just really think about this. We are in a, a stadium full of people with all different backgrounds with all different age groups and sexes. A lot of family people are there. Children may have been watching this. And the comments were just inappropriate all around now that I played it in my mind a few times. I'm going to recap it. Here we go. They do. There's no pulling out. They don't do that. They come inside just like they did to our country. Latinos don't pull out. They come inside. Okay. Why are you talking about coming a very graphic word to describe male ejaculation at a presidential rally. I don't care how you want to slice this. It is inappropriate at a political rally in the most divided time ever in American history, targeting a large group of Americans using graphic talk. If I was the campaign at that point, I would have sent the Secret Service up and said, get this guy off the fucking stage right now. That's the only thing they could have done to have protected the backlash that Trump is now experiencing and facing because of these jokes. <laughs> Republicans are the party with a good sense of humor. Free speech is under attack, people. I host a show, and each week I get updates what words we're allowed to use and not use anymore. It's happening right now the past few years. It's a real thing. And... Uh, you know, used to be able to tell people to Google stuff. My mom's a boomer in the state of, o you know, there's a lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Not a lot of laughs on that one. That's why he's trying to recover as a comedian. In any event, what do you think? I think that this really hurt Trump. I think it's going to cost him a lot of Latino voters. What do you think? Now, I have read a lot of your comments on my content. A lot of Puerto Ricans wrote, that this ain't going to change my mind about Trump. And I agree. If you want to vote for Trump and you felt strongly about that, I don't think that the actions of this comedian should influence that for you. I don't see why that would, you know, impact it. I just think it was just so stupid. But there's a lot of voters who just out of spite because they feel insulted will not vote, and they might listen to other influencers, like this video posted on Jennifer Lopez, probably the most famous Puerto Rican, and Mark Anthony, and John Languazomo. Let's play a few of these clips. Here we go. Has something to say about the island that I love. I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. Where my family is from. Puerto Rico is trash. We are Americans, Donald Trump. <laughs> Americans. We voluntarily serve disproportionately high in the military while you have bone spurs. And we vote. Pennsylvania is home to almost half a million Puerto Ricans. North Carolina, 115,000. Georgia, 100,000. Arizona, 64,000. Wisconsin, 61,000. Michigan, 43,000. Nevada, 27,000. We vote Donald Trump. Trash. And by the way, Jennifer Lopez, Ricky Martin, Bad Bunny, Luis Fonsi, and Mark Anthony have over 345 million followers on Instagram. I think you only have 26 million since you care so much about size. <laughs> and don't be fooled. They're called influencers for a reason. Why would this guy give a weapon to the left to use on the president right before 
The election. This is all anyone's talking about now. I'm talking about it. What a silly move on his part. What a silly and foolish move to stir that community. It was just, it was, again, if we were in a comedy club and we were drunk and whatever and people make these, you know, racy jokes, no one gets offended because they know that's what the environment and the setting is. If I'm going to a political rally and we're the party that's going to make America great again, why would I make fun of all these different nationalities when Trump has been accused of being a racist the entire time he's tried to run for office, which I do not think the president is a racist. I really don't. I mean, I don't know what's in his heart of hearts, but I think he generally got along with many different nationalities, races, and creeds. Why would you give them a weapon to use against him? It was foolish and maybe catastrophic. Who knows? Here's John Languanzomo, very famous Puerto Rican actor, been in a ton of movies like Benny Blanco from the Bronx and Carlito's Way and many movies. Let's hear what he had to say. Look, if you're Latino or Puerto Rican and, and you heard that disgusting, despicable abomination, una abominación. It was definitely despicable. Despicable. I agree. Despicable. What that guy said at that hate rally for Trump. And don't give me that BS. You didn't know what he was saying. How did you put in the teleprompter then? How did you hire him? Huh? On what credentials? This is BS. Look, the only way to get back at Trump for this, because we know this is the real him. Remember when he threw the paper towels at those pobrecito allá in Puerto Rico after Maria? The Hurricane Maria? That was horrific. I was so disgusted by his attitude and we all new yorkers know how he he thinks about latinos we know what he thinks especially puerto ricans he's always had a deep hatred we know that for a fact us new yorkers latinos okay new yorkinos so you know how you get back at him by voting against him vote for kamala hurt him where it really hurts at the ballot vote against trump emotion is more powerful than logic Emotion is a weapon that salespeople use. When you make people feel something, even if logically they know it's the right decision, okay, a lot of times people get people to do things that they really don't want to do or they know that maybe it's not the right decision because they use emotion on them. It's called emotional, you know, uh, a persuasion, right? There's no better way to get a large block of people to vote. And the key is it's not just about the Puerto Ricans. The Dominicans are going to feel the same way even though they have their little love and hate relationship with the, with the Puerto Ricans. There's a little sibling rivalry there, right? Because they're kind of like cousins and they share a lot of cultural things and they love each other and make fun of each other. And I have friends, I'm, you know, all, all. <clears throat> this has turned into not just one joke about Puerto Rico. This has turned into a rallying point for all the Latinos that are in America right before the election, thanks to this one fucking moron this one idiot, and I blame his campaign too. I blame his campaign. We don't know. Pennsylvania is a swing state, okay? Pennsylvania is a swing state. There's half a million Puerto Ricans there. They might just feel the reason to go vote now, okay? Now, you remember the last episode? He would have been better off, instead of getting that idiot to, to, to do that set, he would have been better off hiring 50 Cent, Right? Now, remember I said last episode how amazing would it have been if the lights dimmed and 50 Cent came out with the mic right before they bring the former president and maybe future president out? And all you would have heard was, Many men wish death upon me. Go get my eyes and I can't see. Because motherfucker want to take my life away. Well, I guess they actually said this might be a good idea for the pop culture. I found it amazing that 50 Cent claims he turned down $3 million to appear at Trump's New York rally. Rapper says he was asked to join the ex-president's controversial Madison Square Garden event, but is afraid about politics. 50 Cent has revealed that he turned down a $3 million offer. The rapper, who has previously shown admiration for the former president, spoke about the opportunity during an interview on The Breakfast Club. He confirmed that he got... A call and had also been asked to perform his song, Many Men Wish That, during this year's Republican National Convention for a similar sum. I didn't even go far, said the lyricist, whose real name is Curtis Jackson. I didn't talk to them about that kind of stuff. I'm not afraid. I'm afraid about politics. 
It's because when you do get involved, no matter how you feel, someone passionately disagrees with you. He's right. He's smart. As a businessman, 50 cents on point. Sylvester Stallone is on point. These are celebrities that have stayed away from the politics. Why do you want to lose anyone that's about to put money in your pockets? People like Robert De Niro. He's lost so many followers by getting involved. So I understand why 50 didn't do it. Yeah, you might make $3 million now, but that $3 million might cost you $100 million because people are going to be like, oh, you're back in that side? Cool, I'm done with you. He wants money from both sides, left and right. He don't want 25 cent. He want 50 cent. He want 25 cent from the Republicans. He want 25 cent from the Democrats. He's a smart businessman. He's a genius. Trump's Puerto Rico fallout is spreading like a wildfire in Pennsylvania. Donald Trump has a serious Puerto Rico problem in Pennsylvania. Many Puerto Rican voters in the state are furious about racist and demeaning comments delivered at a Trump rally. Some say their dismay is giving Kamala Harris a new opening to win over the state's Latino voters particularly nearly half a million Pennsylvanians are of Puerto Rican descent, reported by Politico.com. Evidence of the backlash was immediate on Monday. A nonpartisan Puerto Rican group drafted a letter urging its members to oppose Trump on Election Day. Other Puerto Rican voters were lighting up WhatsApp chats with reactions to the vulgar display and raising it in morning conversations at their bodegas. Good job, Trump campaign. Smart choice right before the election. Steve Bannon just got out of jail. He must be happy. Meaning Bannon will get out just days before the November 5th election. He's getting out. I'm sorry. He's about to get out. Reported by MSNBC. Having served a four-month stint stint behind bars on the conviction for contempt of Congress, Steve Bannon was released from prison on Tuesday, exactly one week before the election. Okay, so he is out. Bannon exited the federal correctional facility on Tuesday morning in Danbury, Connecticut, where he has been locked up for the past 120 days, a Federal Bureau of Prisons spokesperson told NBC News. Former Donald Trump advisor and a staunch and incendiary supporter of the Republican nominee's re-election bid, Bannon was sentenced to four months in prison for defying a congressional subpoena to testify in the House Select Committee's investigation into the January 6th Capitol attack. He was convicted on two counts of contempt of Congress in 2022, but continuously sought to appeal his conviction in a bid to avoid serving time. The Supreme Court ultimately rejected his 11th hour appeal in June, and he was ordered to report to prison. If we don't win, the first of all, They shred the Constitution. It's the death of the Constitution of the American Republic as we know it. He said on the day his sentence began, Bannon told reporters outside the correctional facility that he was proud to go to prison despite having tried hard to avoid doing so and framed it as a courageous move to stand up to what he characterized as Democrats' weaponization of the justice system. We've all seen images by now. Police are searching for the person who set ballot boxes on fire in Washington and Oregon. Here's what we know, CNN.com. With just days before the election, hundreds of ballots were destroyed by fires this week at two ballot drop box offices in the Pacific Northwest, and investigators are searching for a culprit they say is responsible for both. Many of the ballots in the drop box, Portland, were unaffected, but hundreds of ballots were destroyed in a second ballot box fire nearby Vancouver, Washington. All right, the games and the fuckery have begun, my friends. Stay vigilant, and if you're a poll watcher, get down to the polls. Protect this election as best as possible. One thing the Supreme Court doesn't seem to want to do is protect it. Supreme Court rejects push to remove Robert F. Kennedy Jr. from ballot in two swing states, especially in swing states. Supreme Court on Tuesday rejected an emergency appeal to remove Robert F. Kennedy from the presidential ballot in two battleground states. Kennedy wanted to get off the ballot in Wisconsin and Michigan after dropping his independent bid and endorsing Donald Trump. In the tight contest, he argued that keeping him on violated his First Amendment rights by wrongly implying he still wanted to be elected president. Michigan and Wisconsin said removing his name now with early voting underway days before the election would be impossible. More than 1.5 million people in Michigan have already returned absentee ballots, and another 264,000 have voted early. In Wisconsin, over 858,000 people have returned absentee ballots. The man who attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband gets life in prison. The man who was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison for attacking the husband of former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi with a hammer in their California home was sentenced Tuesday to life in prison without the possibility of parole following a separate state trial. I love how the people that hurt Nancy Pelosi go to jail, probably didn't get bail, 
But every day when regular Americans get beat, killed, shot, stabbed, they get out on bill all the time. Sometimes the same day in places like New York. Ironic, isn't it? Trump and Rogan interview I told you would break records. Tops 38 million views. The irony is it doesn't seem to be trending on YouTube. I don't know why. Very interesting. What do you think about that, folks? Let's see here. Okay, 38 million It doesn't have a heat days. signature. They don't know what their propulsion system was. It's almost at 39 million. And I think I heard some reports that uh, the vice president will be going on shortly. <clears throat> An Israeli airstrike in North Gaza killed dozens of people as the parliament bans the United Nations uh, RWA. At least 60 Palestinians and wounded more. 60 Palestinians dead in an airstrike. The strike hit a five-story building in the area of Bet Lahia, where families of displaced Palestinians were taking shelter. At least 25 of those killed were children. So half of those 50 that were hit in an airstrike were children. Half of those hit in an airstrike were children. Half of those hit in an airstrike were children. Half of those hit in an airstrike were children. It's unacceptable. Shame on the world. Honestly, shame on you also, Israel. Shame on you. I don't direct my comments towards my Jewish friends and brothers and sisters, but the actions of your government is horrific. I can never support it. I'm sorry. Excessive. Biden says Ukraine should strike back if North Korean troops cross into the Ukraine. U.S. President Joe Biden, if he really said that, on Tuesday, Ukraine should strike back if North Korean troops cross into the Ukraine. I'm concerned about it if they cross into Ukraine. Okay, this war has the ten potential to expand. Hezbollah has announced its new uh, leader. If I was them, I wouldn't announce anyone. They all seem to be not lasting too long. You're probably better off not telling anybody who the leader is. Not that I'm trying to give advice to you, but clearly what you're doing is not working to keep them alive. Lebanese armed group Hezbollah named Naim Chazem as its new leader on Tuesday, but Israel said his tenure would be temporary. <laughs> Make sure he doesn't get any pagers, please, or goes any near any electronics for his own safety. UK stabbing suspect and death of three girls found with Rissen al-Qaeda material in charge on the terrorism attack. So I guess this kid was a terrorist after all. And the riots that started were because they were targeting Muslims. But this kid wasn't born a Muslim. That's the interesting thing, you know. In any event, he was proven to be a terrorist. And that guy, I think his name's Johnson, they just sentenced him to 18 months for making these statements he did against migrants and the crimes that have been committed in the UK. Um, <clears throat> I don't think he should have been jailed for that, in my humble opinion. Free speech is free speech. Putin launches drills of Russian nuclear forces stimulating retaliatory strikes. Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday launched a massive exercise of the country's nuclear forces featuring missile launches in a simulation of a retaliatory strike as he continued to flex the country's nuclear muscle amid spiraling tensions with the West over Ukraine. So, war games, my friends. Some positive news. A lost Mayan city with temple pyramids and plazas discovered in Mexico. This is reported by The Guardian. The discovery in the southeastern Mexican state of Campeche came about after Luke Al Thomas, an anthropologist at Northern Arizona University, began wondering whether non-archaeological uses of the state-of-the-art laser mapping known as LIDAR could help shed light on the Maya world. For the longest time, our sample of the Mayan civilization was a couple hundred square kilometers. That sample was hard won by archaeologists who painstakingly walked over every square meter, hacking away at the vegetation with machetes to see if they were standing on a pile of rocks that might have been someone's home 1,500 years ago. LIDAR is a remote sensing technique that uses a pulse laser and other data obtained by flying over a site to generate three-dimensional information about the shape of service 
characteristics. So as you can see here, the images. Although Thomas knew it could help, he also knew it was not a cheap tool. Funders are reluctant to pay for LIDAR surveys in areas without obvious traces of the Mayan civilization, which reached its height between AD 250 and AD 900. It occurred to the anthropologist that others may already have mapped the area for different reasons. Scientists in ecology, forestry, and civil engineering have been using LIDAR surveys to study some of these areas for totally separate purposes. So, more runes discovered. Sean Combs, accused in lawsuits of assaulting 10 and 17-year-old boys, you know, physically assaulting them, you know, from the rear and all that stuff. Diddy Combs has been accused in separate lawsuits of assaulting two boys. One was 10 and another was 17. The civil lawsuits filed Monday in New York State Supreme Court and more than two dozen other accusing the embattled music mogul of misconduct physically. Supreme Court is a trial-level court in New York State. Among the attorneys for the two plaintiffs, both of whom filed their claims anonymously, are Tony Busby and Andrew Van Arsdale, who have said they represent more than 100 people who have claims against Combs. P. Diddy kept meticulous records of his parties and has had enough dirt to hang half a Hollywood Why Entertainment reports. Sean Diddy Combs has had zero support from exes, including Jennifer Lopez and Cameron Diaz, who are in a major panic that he'll drag them down by spilling sordid secrets about them if he winds up wearing a number. It's not likely they've been going around trashing him, but everyone's been giving him a seriously wide berth. He's radioactive at this point. Even if he hasn't been found guilty, his name is Mud, and it would be social suicide to have anything to do with him. Combs 54 is currently awaiting trial for a number of horrible crimes, racketeering, trafficking by force, transportation for purposes of prostitution, and has been made persona non grata by the industry that once considered him one of the most successful music moguls of his generation. The Can't Nobody Hold Me Down, who's being held down, singer has denied the allegations but remains in federal custody until his trial begins. My, 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 J-Lo. You might have bigger problems than Donald Trump and Puerto Rico. I wonder what Diddy's got. Another rapper, rapper Takashi 69 who portrayed himself as a gangster, tough guy until it was time to be one, and he ended up ratting everyone out to save his own ass. That guy, you know, he looks like a fucking treasure troll with all these tattoos on his face. Made it popular for young people to do this because they're fucking stupid and they just follow anyone's example. Because they parents, they don't have parents. They don't have any real role models to look up to. The rapper was arrested for an alleged violation of his supervised release. He will remain behind bars pending a November 12th hearing and will spend the next two weeks at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Authorities say Takashi was detained Tuesday morning after he traveled to Las Vegas without permission and then denied doing so, failed to attend a scheduled drug testing, and then tes tested positive for methamphetamine. He was also an hour late to court on Tuesday morning. The rapper apologized to the judge after learning he would be back behind bars. He told the judge he flew up from Florida and woke up late. He went to Las Vegas to perform at the T-Mobile Arena to make a living and thought he had permission to do so. He said he tested positive for methamphetamines because he was on Adderall and has been jumped for cooperating with the federal government. I'm human, Takashi told Judge Payall. I'm not a treasure troll. I'm a human. Who sentenced him in 2019 after pleading guilty? I'm a human, bro. Whatever. The last rap news today. Adidas reaches out-of-court settlement with rapper Ye. Adidas has reached an out-of-court settlement with rapper Ye. Sorry, Yeezy. To end all legal proceedings between them, the sportswear brand said on Tuesday, Adidas and Ye have been embroiled in multiple lawsuits for the past two years since the German company ended a partnership with the rapper previously known as Kanye West. There isn't any more open issues and there is no money going either way and we both move on. That's reported by CNBC.com. For those of you that own Bitcoin, as you build the future digital currency prison for the rest of the world, you should be happy because Bitcoin has hit an all-time high of 73,006. Not all-time high, but Bitcoin has hit 73,600 as fundamentals suggest new all-time highs are programmed. Bitcoin strong range break and sustained multi-day close above the previous trading range inspire traders to open new positions with the intent of chasing higher targets in the $85,000 to $160,000 range. In any event, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll always be here to give you what's going on. 
Make sure you hit that sub button. Do your job. We live in an interesting world. An interesting world indeed. This is Beck Lover, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Interesting Times podcast right here on the Beck Lover podcast.